All right, so it's been a few days. Um, I went out of town, and while I was out of town, it was Prime Day, so I ordered a microphone because uh, I want to do. Okay, so last last painting session, I was kind of doing like like a Bob Ross type like chill commentary, like I'm painting and just like talking, and it was like um, I hope I'm not making like a weird face while I talk, but I'm. It was like kind of like relaxing for me to be able to talk through the process and um and yeah I don't know so I was thinking like maybe I would do like a long like paint with me Bob Ross style but like days of footage and it would be like a long form video and then I would edit it down to like a shorter um video for people who don't care about like the really long drawn out process um and that's just for fun like that's just something that I think it'd be fun for me so yeah I just want to try doing that and seeing if the microphone helps because when I was painting last time and just like talking obviously like the microphone from the camera directly was like it like barely picked up my voice and it was mostly just like <laughs> really loud paint paintbrush strokes <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, let's, yeah, <laughs> so I'm gonna start painting. So I'm gonna take a stab and guess that I'm not the only one who, uh, starting something is sometimes the hardest part of a project. It's a little bit difficult to take plastic wrap off one-handed. Starting a project is sometimes the hardest thing, or like getting back into it, especially, at least for me, with something physical, traditional painting, especially oil painting, because there's so many components, right? So you've got your, your paints, you've got all your different paint tubes, uh, you've got your, your mediums and your brushes and your reference photo and your canvas, and you have to prep your canvas, and maybe you need to like, maybe you actually um, stretch your own canvas, which I personally love doing. Maybe I'll do a video stretching a canvas one of these days. Maybe not. What do you guys do to get yourself in the actual drawing, painting, art making process? So last time you joined me, I was finishing up covering all the white space just so that I could feel like uh, more <clears throat> confident going into this. So today I want to work a little bit more on the water, refining that. Yeah, I want to work on the water and the foreground because I've found that, um, because foreground is like in the bottom of a painting, I feel like sometimes people, or at least I do, like you kind of neglect it, uh, the foreground and yeah, so I want to work on pushing this forward so that it's not all flat. I don't want the water to look like this. I want the water to look like this, right? So that is my challenge for today. Obviously I'm not, <laughs> I'm not super confident about how ideal this setup is with me holding a microphone while I paint. Um, could end up being distracting, imagine, or could give my hand something to do because I was feeling a little bit like um a little bit self-conscious just because like the camera's watching me so I wasn't sure like <laughs> what I should have my hand do in the meantime while I'm working um my brother suggested getting or rigging up some kind of a an arm situation but I think that could um, kind of defeat the purpose of following my voice and not the other, you know, because I'm, I'm moving back and forth between the palette and the painting. So, I don't know. I'm going to test this out, see how it goes. I'm not gonna be a, a full-time YouTuber or anything. This is just like, it's really, really, truly just a hobby. 
and that's really all I want it to be. I think it's amazing that as many people as have, have um, watched some of my videos and subscribed and um, commented, goodness gracious, um, genuinely like taken aback, um, really, really cool. So I really appreciate you watching any of this, even if you're not interested in like this long form type of content, you know, feel free to skip past, leave me a comment that you hate it, obviously. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just hanging out. I haven't painted in a long, long time since, like, I think I said before. But I don't know if you could hear it before because I didn't have the microphone, but um, I haven't really painted in um, almost a year, so. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm kind of uh, sussing out little rock shapes on my reference photo, like little geometric blobs. I'm painting very translucently, and if I hate it, I'll just paint over it again, do something else. When I say Bob Ross style uh, video, I would like to clarify that I <laughs> do not in any way claim to be as uh, as influential over the generations as Bob, as Robert. Um, just like the conversational aspect I personally enjoy. Sometimes, sometimes. Uh, but I don't see myself doing like straight up painting tutorials where I'm like, here's how you too can create this scene. I just kind of want to talk about thoughts that occur to me. Clearly there's not a lot today. Nothing in my noggin. I think I need more blue up here. I grew up to be a little bit of a perfectionist a little story that I like to tell people sometimes is that I have a very vivid specific memory from my childhood. I was in the four-year-old like nursery at my church and we were coloring and I tattled on my friend for coloring outside the lines. I went to the teacher and I said, Daniel is coloring outside the lines. And I expected the teacher to yell. <laughs> I expected action to be taken. Um, and actually I was told that that was okay. Um, and I was uh, pretty incensed, frankly. What, what was this world coming to that we could just color outside the lines <laughs> and it was okay? Uh, so yeah. So that is something that I've been working on um, literally uh, for as long as I can remember is letting go of perfectionism. So 
Yeah, I'm very, very uh, drawn to visually impressionist paintings. I just love the, like, the juxtaposition of, like, the soft and the, like, the soft and the hard and the colorful and the desaturated and, like, um, kind of the the non sequitur colors, the the strange. You wonder how did the how did that painter see that? Why did they? Why would they add green to someone's face? How did they know that that would work? You know. How can some people see? those out of place colors and make it beautiful and not like sickly so or oop, that's more than i wanted to put there <laughs> um or uh people who can leave a smudge leave a soft edge or let let uh, borders mingle when I am very tempted to make very crisp edges because I can but it I I don't always enjoy the look of it I love the soft look artists like uh, Humana Agra ugh. Her painting style is so, so dreamy. I adore it. I aspire. Um, Valerie Lynn. Her dreamy use of composition where she'll cut something off. Uh, very similar to Impressionists. They also really very much played with composition and framing. Like Monet has a few paintings where he was very inspired by um, Japanese printmaking. And uh, he, he framed a lot of his paintings where like the subjects, maybe not a lot, but he, he framed some of my favorite of his paintings where his subjects were like just a little bit cropped out in kind of a tight way and it's really interesting because when you just see a, a picture of the painting you well i sometimes assume that like it's not the full painting like they didn't get a good scan of it but then like when you see the painting in person you're like wow this is the whole thing and it's impactful. I feel like I'm in it and I want to see more of it and I want to I want to turn around the corner of the frame to see what else is there. And it's uh I don't know, it draws you. Ha, pun. So, I was looking at this area from far away and I like this and this and this and there are some things i like about this but i don't like this i'm just gonna paint right over it a little bit of thalo blue i believe it's called yeah i'm just gonna break up these shapes although also from far away i noticed that there's like a lot of um regularity between like the spacing of these so just do it, Shannon. Stop waving an empty paintbrush around. So, I'm gonna darken these. I might be being a little bit of a perfectionist here. I'm trying not to be. I'm trying to be kind of soft. Ba, 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 ba. Maybe I need like a more, like a wider, more bristly brush to be. 
because when you have these uh, bristles, even though, so a softer brush, like physically softer brush will actually give you like smoother, like kind of harder looking edges. And a bristle brush with these like stiffer, like a boar's hair type of brush will uh, end up giving you more of a like airy soft and you'll be able to see like the brush strokes a little more. I'm using a little bit of alizarin crimson to darken up my, what is this, ultramarine blue. Yeah, and I'm going in and adding some darkness behind her arm here because I know that there's also some um, light rippling here. There's kind of a of movement of like a like a moonbeam almost down this way, and for that moonbeam to look brighter, I need more contrast. I'm adding a little bit of, what kind of green is this? Green, green, thalo green. Adding a little bit of thalo green into my blue and alizarin crimson mix. The thalo green is like a cooler, darker tone than the, um, like the terra, like the, like the sap green or whatever. And then more darkness over here. I'm gonna use a little bit of medium to make it kind of transparent. So we're sort of starting to work toward the idea of rocks in there, but we're not quite there yet. It'll take some time to build up. But once you're in a painting, it's so easy to just keep... I shouldn't say easy, but it's a lot easier to keep going than to get started. I'm here now, my colors are here. I've had a couple of moments with this painting in particular, and certainly other paintings too, but just while I've been working on this, I've had the thought, what's the point of this painting? It's just another pretty girl in front of some nature. Why make this painting? What's the point of finishing it? I don't know. I don't know what the point is. I just think when you're a painter or any other kind of artist, it's not about a point. It's just a compulsion. I'm not saying I'm compelled because I'm particularly good or creative or have something to say. Certainly not anything that hasn't already been said. I'm just compelled because I love it. It's a good question though. Why are some people compelled and others? I mean, I have a friend, we joke because 
she refuses to admit that she has any kind of uh, creative bone in her body. And she jokes about how she always hated art class. Well, not jokes, like she's, she's serious, she always hated art class, but she tells me because I'm an art teacher And I just, I just wonder at that, how can you not need to create? I thought everyone needed to create. I can't imagine not needing to create. I really can't. got a little more serious than I was planning. I'm not trying to be serious, it's just a thought. I think I'm gonna use a really dark color. So phthalo blue, phthalo green, and alizarin crimson, which if you use them enough with a little bit of yellow ochre can turn black like a chromatic black. I'm gonna use a really dark color to start giving these river rocks. Hopefully a little bit of uh, three-dimensional definition. I'm constantly looking over my reference. I'm not exactly trying to copy what's exactly there because I don't fully want this to be like photorealistic. That's just not like if I wanted a photo, I would just take a photo. And like I said earlier, there's something really beautiful that I just always appreciate about impressionist paintings. I'm trying to learn that resistance to perfection where you can leave something at the point where it gives enough of an impression that it is the thing you're painting in the light that you're aiming for. I don't know what's happening here. I'm going to keep doing this. I think in the end I'll add like once what I'm doing with the rocks dries, I think I'll add another transparent layer and some um, more opaque highlights to hopefully convey the idea that there's water above the surface. So down here, the rocks turn a little bit more gray and then they kind of disappear under the opaque reflection on the top of the water. So I'm just going to add some slightly warmer tones and the touchiest touch of white to make my cool bluey green into like more of a grayish. I'm not sure if that's the right move, but it's what I'm doing. too much. I'm gonna have to paint over that with a lighter color. All right, what's happening here? So I need to fade out these rocks a little better. Uh, and a little more green there. Yeah. 
Um, wow, I am standing like right in a sunbeam and it's getting real hot, but I cannot turn on the AC because it's really loud. So, suffering artist here. some more contrast. It's funny how difficult it is as an artist to make imperfect work, such as impressionism or what have you, because it's a lot harder to know when the right place is to stop like the right place, like there's times when you need to define something other times it would be best to just leave it like there's a little splotch of white paint here that I really enjoy so I'm gonna leave that guy right there I don't know about that shape. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna add a little more green, a little more of this light color. See what happens. No. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I have not cleaned or wiped my brushes off at all. I just get more of the color I need and I go. I think I just killed this. Overworked. Moving around, moving on. Eh, put that there. Step back. Put more here. Step back. Put a little red in there. Why not? I need to let it go. I'm going to put some red here, 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 here. Yeah, I've been taking it a little too seriously, so I just need to mess it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to put some green. And a little bit of light color, more light, oh, mm, that's weird, don't love that brush stroke, but there's no way Monet loved every brush stroke. And any more ultramarine, I've got a lot of thalo blue going on here, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, somehow that happened. Okay, rude. That's okay. I still have to put some daffodils over here, so that's fine. Yeah, that's what I should do. Just paint faster. Stop worrying. Da da da. So it's really just a lot more alive when I do. A bright strike right here. Brighter. Yeah. Mm. And here, and here, and here. Maybe it shouldn't have been there, but whatever, we can fix that later. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna start going in with the, like, I don't know what it is, it's like, it's just grass, but maybe it is also dandelion, or daffodil, I mean. So the concept behind this painting, this painting was, 
How do I explain this? So this was a college project that I'm resurrecting because I never got to finish it. And I need a different brush. So the assignment was, it was actually a series of three. So the first painting, we had to create an abstract painting using a song as the complete inspiration. And it had to be an instrumental with no lyrics. And it had to be like non-representational, abstract. And, and then there was a movie inspired one. So we had to choose a famous artistic director that our professor gave us a list to choose from and watch one of the director's movies and um, paint a scene that was inspired by the um, like the framing and the cinematography and the storytelling so it couldn't just be like a study of a frame in the movie it had to be like actually like taking in concepts and processing like the artistic decisions that the that the um, director was making then this one was the last one of the semester and it had to be based on a poem i'm working a lot on this grass the poem that i chose was about a garden in the moonlight and it genuinely might have been called something like the garden by moonlight or something and i chose to do echo and narcissus from greek mythology in the moon light i don't totally remember why i don't know i think i was just looking for an excuse to go back to painting a portrait because <laughs> that's like one of my favorite things to do like, I just want to paint pictures of, like, pretty girls in nature. It's just fun. Um, so, I was just looking for an excuse to do that. And I really like the idea because, I don't know, just, like, storytelling-wise, like, you can't go wrong with Greek mythology. It's always a banger. This is a picture of my friend. Totally, like unposed she was just like showing me an outfit and it was like a bad photo that her husband took for her and I was like wait can I paint that and she's like oh my god yeah and then I just photoshopped it into some nature that I had photographed and added in some daffodils which are what narcissus turned into apparently And now I'm sitting here three years later, still working on it. And I might not finish it for another three years, but it's all right. Let's have fun while we do it. I don't like what's happening here. Yeah, not sold. Not at all. But we're going to keep working. I honestly can't handle much more of this heat. Okay, so after spending uh, a little while sitting in the AC, reading a few chapters of my book, I feel pretty good about where the painting is moving. I am hating the grass less. There's still it's definitely not like it's not there yet. I feel like at this point in the painting, I need to now start focusing more on building up the the character of echo um so finish you know um finish the skirt colors and build up her substance more um i really like how her form is taking shape i want to make sure that i keep it kind of playful with the colors and soft with the brush strokes not too sharp um and not too exact the background where like the trees and the grass are going to be definitely is going to need to be addressed carefully. I 
because again, I don't want to add so much detail that it uh, comes forward more than the character. But um, I like what's happening up in the top left corner with the twig branches. Those are my thoughts for now. I think how I'm going to set up these videos, I, I'm really just trying this stuff out. I think I'm going to still save footage so that I can do like a more cinematic, more edited version, like a shorter version of the painting video, but I want that to be like a complete, you know, so you see some type of finished painting in the end, and a finished painting takes, you know, days, weeks, maybe months, maybe even years if you, you know, um, neglect it <laughs> for a few years. Obviously that's going to, you know, be a really long time to wait between posting videos, and... Yeah, I, I don't know. If you enjoy seeing like the full, long form, slow, boring process with my rambling words, then feel free to follow along. And if you hate it, don't forget to leave a mean comment about it and uh, give it a thumbs down and probably unsubscribe until I post a shorter video. Um, and you're free to hate that one too. We're not going to break out the smaller brush yet, Shannon. We're going to work on big, 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 big stuff. Obviously, it's a pink skirt. I personally actually ended up liking the pink. I wouldn't usually choose it, but I think in this composition, I don't know. I think I just think it's pretty and it goes with the, like, the cool composition, but it still, like, stands out enough. You know, I, c I could have done like a plainer color, like a, like a white or a brown or a, you know, like a neutral, less, less modern color. I know that like historically dyes, I, I, I don't know, like pink dye maybe wasn't a thing. Maybe it was. Somebody tell me if it was, because that would be a cool fact. But I just like the look of this. I am still mixing the pink with like a little bit of the colors I was using before. Just so it's, you know, like a cohesive painting. It's gonna be the drapery that well, it's all a challenge. Painting is a challenge. Painting is a test of lots of things. Endurance and noticing. I think I'm going to use some quinacridone magenta. So quinacridone magenta is a super fun color to use when you're using pink. Alizarin crimson is a beautiful, cool red. But there is something marvelously pink about magenta. It's just a little different. Let's see, I need like a lot more brightness near that. Brightness up here at the top of the where she's gathering the skirt. Pink here. And then I can kind of mix. See, so this is a lizard and crimson that I'm applying now, and you can see how 
it's obviously more red than the magenta here which kind of gives us like a nice contrast like it makes the crimson which I would usually call a cool color uh, appear a little more warm so we get a little bit of that warm contrast although I don't like the shape that I just did here I'm gonna see it's so sharp because I like I like the action of creating sharp sharp edges but I don't like the actual effect visually so I'm just gonna grab like a lot of phthalo blue and just like kind of go back and forth until it softens out a little bit oops all right that's too dark the thing about edges is that crispy hard edges are gonna look uh, closer and flatter most of the time I don't know I don't know if there's like a hard and fast rule but what I'm thinking of in my in my little brain it ends up looking closer like in high res right like if I was drawing like a like some architecture and it was like a perfect man-made corner then yes the edge would be if it was close up the edge would be in really sharp high resolution i think i'm messing up the water here uh sharp edge but anything that's around the edge turns the corner and it fades and you get ever so slightly the effect of um, like atmospheric perspective which is when things far away start to fade because of the amount of dust particles between your eye and the object you're seeing it kind of blurs it out and uh, makes like far away mountains look blue instead of whatever color is actually on them So, see, as soon as I softened out that edge, this stopped being a sharp, flat shape, and it started being a 3D form. It isn't perfectly because it's just blobs of color, but maybe you understand what I'm saying. That is a bouncy canvas. Um, I want some purpley purple. I'm gonna use a little magenta and some of the teal color that I used down here. This got too blue. I'm gonna have to go back in with some green. And this needs to be like lighter and maybe bluer i want it to be <clears throat> like lilac or lavender not this warm color i want it to be closer to that i think there's just too much pink and i think i need to use yeah ultramarine not phthalo because i i see phthalo blue as a warmer blue I'm not sure if that's something everyone sees, but that's how I perceive it. Taking a step back, I think I need little red here and red in this line yeah that's better and I need red in this 
area. When I end up painting the whole skirt mostly purple with just like a few touches of pink, if I do it right, it should still look like a pink skirt that your eyes have like compensated for with all the use of all the other cool colors around it. I like the shape of that smudge. It might not get to stay there, but for now it's staying. Oh, thank goodness my fridge stopped making noise. My fridge stopped making noise. <laughs> I almost want to add like just the touchiest touch of yellow on the top of this. I'm a little bit worried it's because it's such a strong, like it's not a bright yellow, it's just a, like a warm, it's like a very warm touch. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's okay. All right, now leave the ruffles. Those might frustrate me. I'm gonna not take it too seriously. We're just playing around. It's just a painting. See, the thing is, I can go in and do this messy stuff. This, like, like, what is that? <laughs> and I can go in later and refine any areas that need to be refined or changed. So I can get in, like, the big shapes and the big colors and then later I can be like I'm just gonna throw in some turquoise which that's actually a good idea Yes, it's a pink skirt, but I can do what I want. And then there's a smooth transition between this space and this space. I think it's starting to come into form. I need Painting like this does make me wish I could uh, live stream this, this type of session, but I don't really have a consistent schedule that I could stick with. It would be very much like I just happened to hop on at some point. And honestly, I think the setup of it, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be, I was going to say, I think maybe the setup of it would hinder me in the getting started process. And getting started is like challenging enough on its own, as I spoke on earlier. But 
still had to set up this camera and microphone, so maybe it wouldn't be any different. Or like, you know, wouldn't be any worse, any more challenging. But again, you guys would never know when to watch. suppose if I forced myself to paint at least a certain number of days a week, I could stream pre-recorded sessions. During a scheduled time, but then I may as well just post to YouTube. I don't like this. I think the coloring is accurate, but it's ugly. <laughs> That's less ugly, I think. are a mess. It's nothing. But now I can go in and define it with a smaller brush. Also going to add more green and turquoise to this area. I kind of added way too much thalo blue earlier. It just needs to be warmer up there. Because it's closer to the foreground. And colors generally appear warmer and more saturated toward the foreground. Or so I've been told. Really overworking this area. I think I really need to stop. Kind of getting lost in these ruffles, honestly. Taking a step back. Uh, needs to be lighter. Oh, oh, that's just white. That's certainly lighter. Okay, let's get a little bit of crimson on the back half of that. I think that's a pretty good place to stop. The sun is setting. And I'm 
pretty tired. But I really appreciate if you watched this. If it was done in the background while you were painting, I think that's pretty cool. If you were just watching it, I don't know, if you, watching it while you're playing a video game or watching a whole other movie or listening to music or sleeping. You know, have it running while you're sleeping. Appreciate it. If you hate it, remember to let me know. Thanks for joining me. Uh, you're crazy. Bye.